Ooh, yeah. So if you've seen the Book of Mormon, um, I mean, the, the play that made these dudes almost billionaires. I mean, South Park made them some money, but this play was crazy. You can kind of, um, you know, see how they play with naivety, this sort of naive, um, the naivety of the world of, uh, of Mormons. Because, you know, um, this, is, this is, again, being you know, very stereotypical, but, um, you know, with fundamentalist Mormons, you know, they live in Mormon communities. They often, um, you know, don't experience, experience much beyond, beyond that. I mean, you see that in the episode where Gary's family talks about, you know, everybody in their community is Mormon. And so they move to South Park where, where people aren't <clears throat> and then have to kind of, you know, negotiate that and navigate that. Um, but there's a sort of naivety to it that Matt and Trey go into heavy duty wise in the Book of Mormon, which you should see if you, I mean, I don't know if it's still playing or touring, but oh man, it was really good. Um, so just some bits from Under the Banner of Heaven, um, and this will give you a little bit more of a sense of the history of, of the Mormon church, okay? So these, uh, you know, in the Book of Mormon is largely the ideas of Joseph Smith, uh, Jr., okay, that he had in the 1820s. The church was incorporated in Palmyra, New York, so in upstate New York. If you read the whole book, you see how um, members of the church were forced out of everywhere they went. Missouri, Indiana, um, you know, it's because, you know, Protestant uh, Christians and Catholics just didn't want them uh, there, um, they kind of, you know, thought it was a cult in, in many ways. <clears throat> um, but if you read Under the Banner of Heaven, you know, there you have the mainstream church, okay, and then you also have the fundamentalist uh, uh, Latter-day Saints group. The fundamentalist Latter-day Saints group uh, is still believes in plural marriage. They own a very... Um, a, or did own a large plot of land in uh, Utah and I believe Arizona. <clears throat> um, that was their land. Um, their leader and prophet, uh, Warren Jeffs, is um, in jail for, I believe, um, marrying, you know, in setting up marriages with like teenage girls and grown men, uh, stuff like that. Okay. But you have conflicting, you know, you have the, the Church of Latter-day Saints, the mainstream church, which is against polygamy, um, plural marriage, and, you know, I mean, yo, there's all sorts of fundamentalist Mormon groups. There's one in Oregon, um, I can't remember the name of it, damn it, but the group, like, their beliefs are, like, not only are we going to have, you know, plural marriages, but we are going to take acid and have sex with other people's wives and orgies. That, look, look that shit up. That's in Oregon. I cannot remember the name of the sect, but um, it's here. Okay. Um, now, <laughs> they talk about this story uh, when Moroni appears um, of the Nephites, um, who are the Caucasians um, <clears throat> in the story. I mean, I mean, there's a... I, there's a pretty clear uh, racist uh, part of this story. Uh, there was a video on YouTube, too, that was like, I'll, I'll see if I can bring it up. I'll plop it on and plop it in here. To decide their destiny, the head of the Mormon gods called a great heavenly council meeting. Both of Elohim's eldest sons were there, Lucifer and his brother Jesus. A plan was presented to build planet Earth, where the spirit children would be sent to take on mortal bodies and learn good from evil. Lucifer stood and made his bid for becoming savior of this new world. Wanting the glory for himself, he planned to force everyone to become gods. Opposing the idea, the Mormon Jesus suggested giving man his freedom of choice, as on other planets. The vote that followed approved the proposal of the Mormon Jesus 
who would become savior of the planet Earth. Enraged, Lucifer cunningly convinced one-third of the spirits destined for Earth to fight with him in revolt. Thus, Lucifer became the devil and his followers the demons. Sent to this world, they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remained neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. The spirits that fought most valiantly against Lucifer would be born into Mormon families on planet Earth. These would be the lighter-skinned people, or white and delightsome, as the Book of Mormon describes them. But the Nephite, and part of the story, the Nephites versus the Lamanites, and the Lamanites were, you know, indigenous, what we would know as Native Americans, um, and... I mean, you got to think, you know, you got to think about the whole time of like pioneering and, and what was going on in the United States um, between um, you know, in, indigenous people here and the white people, the Europeans, <clears throat> you know, and this reversed that story. That is this basically, you know, uh, the story in the Book of Mormon was like the actual Native Americans are white um, and then because the Lamanites, you know, um, uh, essentially were bad, we turned their skin dark. Mm, you know. According to the Book of Mormon, after his resurrection, Jesus came to the Americas to preach to the Indians, who the Mormons believe are really Israelites. Thus, the Jesus of Mormonism established his church in the Americas as he had in Palestine. By the year 421 AD, the dark-skinned Indian Israelites, known as Lamanites, had destroyed all of the white Nephites in a number of great battles. The Nephites' records were supposedly written on golden plates and buried by Moroni, the last living Nephite in the hill Cumorah. Fourteen hundred years later, a young treasure seeker named Joseph Smith, who was known for his tall tales, claimed to have uncovered these same gold plates near his home in upstate New York. He is now honored by Mormons as a prophet because he claimed to have had visions from the spirit world in which he was commanded to organize the Mormon church because all Christian creeds were an abomination. It was Joseph Smith who originated most of these peculiar doctrines which millions today believe to be true. Um, anyways, um, uh... Brigham Young uh, was also a major part of the early Church, Church of Mormon. Uh, he became the first governor of Utah. I mean, the Mormons ultimately, uh, they kept getting pushed out of everywhere. And under the banner of heaven, Dick uh, describes this, they get pushed out of like everywhere they go with violence too. It wasn't just like, you need to go. It was like, we're going to kill the fuck out of you. And the Mormons had to have basically armed themselves. And, and anyways, they ended up in Utah where nobody was. <laughs> and they friggin' essentially settled Utah um, in 1847. Um, and, uh, you know, they had all these wars, the Utah War, the Missouri War, the Illinois War. Sorry, it wasn't Indiana, it was Illinois. Um, you know, and, and ultimately they won Utah. And um, that's been the Mormon state. You know, I mean, I mean, obviously you go into Utah, it's where there are a lot of Mormons, you know, uh, but then you've, you know, towns like Salt Lake City, which is filled with Gentiles. Um, it's the Sin City there, you know. But like you go out, Provo, you go out to other spots, like you have very fundamentalist, like not fundamentalist necessarily like polygamy into like celestial or plural, plural marriage, but really adherent to the church. Very, um, um, closed society, let's just say that. Um, 
But yeah, there's been a lot of like breaks in the LDS, so there's a lot of offshoots of it, primarily the Fundamentalist Church of Latter-day Saints. And this largely has to do with, um, you know, the establishment of plural marriage. So this is seen as deviant behavior by the mainstream church. They do not, um, they do not partake in this. They do not, you know, think it's right. Although their, their God, their first prophet, Joseph Smith, established this practice. Now, um, this was banned in Utah in 1862 by a non-Mormon governor, um, and the church later banned it in 1890 and again in 1904. I believe that there was some um, uh, 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 changes. So it has been banned essentially since the early 1900s. Um, but it's still practice. I mean, there's all sorts of fucking TV shows about it that, that you can check out, um, you know, about plural marriages or celestial um, marriages, you know, so it's, a, it's it, you know, but um, it's, the mainstream church does not practice it. 